This video series has detailed instructions for making origami hang gliders of various sizes that you can surf on waves of air. They're aerodynamically efficient enough that with practice you might be able to fly with only your hands creating the wave of air. or even one hand. Okay, here we go. Young kids can fly them too if they have some help. <laughs> the instructions are based on the experience of my middle school technology students making, adjusting, and flying them. This is a challenging project. It takes attention to detail to build them and perseverance in adjusting them. But I'm confident that a person who can follow directions can fly. It costs almost nothing to make an origami hang glider. There are no special materials, just ordinary printer paper to get started and recycled telephone book paper for a lighter, slower hang glider suited to soaring with your hands. A sliver of plastic drinking straw and a bit of tape are the only other materials needed. Using your own hands to transmute humble scraps into mysterious flyers is a kind of aeronautical alchemy, immensely satisfying. Although it's smaller than this kind of hang glider, the science that allows you to fly in the air as long as you want, not just glide, is very similar. Moving hands through the air isn't an intuitive way to levitate objects. My hypothesis or guess is that if you could float in the air and shrink, if something pushed into your space, you and the air would be pushed out of the way, over the top to fill the void and back. This would create a bump or wave of air. Air isn't visible, so it's hard to get our minds around it, but my students made some science exhibits that used ultrasonic fog machines. Could we use fog suspended in air to make a wind tunnel of sorts? Well, not a genuine wind tunnel like this, but some improvised cardboard boxes taped together. A piece of cardboard starts moving forward, and, yes, a bump rises in front of the cardboard and flows over and behind, at least until we reach the end. We created a wave of air. Notice that it has an upward direction just before it goes over. If we float on the leading edge of a wave of water, we're propelled forward. That's surfing. If an object is lightweight and aerodynamically efficient, you can surf it on the upward leading edge of the wave of air. Hang glider pilots use what they call ridge lift. Wind directed up when it hits mountains to keep flying for hours. The scale's different, but the principle for staying up is the same. Even if there's a basic scientific explanation, there's still a lot of mystery left waiting to be explored. It's still a young science. Being an egalitarian pursuit, anybody in the global village of experimenters can jump in and innovate cool variations. There are links to other Science Toy Maker videos in this series at sciencetoymaker.org. One details a slower tumblewing glider design that might be easier to start with. I start off my sixth grade students with that design. 
another video investigates deeper into the science of full-size, person-carrying hang gliders. Another shows who's been doing what with walk-along gliding. And another recounts how this particular two-for-one design evolved. That's the one to go to to understand why it's built this way. So you'll find some design theory and tips that you can use as a starting point for creating your own innovations. Also at sciencetoymaker.org, there are links to other people's paper airplane walk-along designs. The two-for-one is so named because you make two at one time. By attaching the printer pattern to lighter weight phone book paper, you can cut and fold them together. When separated, you learn to adjust and fly with the more robust printer paper glider. It flies faster, not a bad thing for my energetic middle school students. Some of them even make inroads into flying the heavier gliders with only their hands. Then with that experience, you can fly the more delicate phone book paper glider. Its slow flight is breathtaking. It reminds me of those super light model airplanes that fly so slowly, it seems like they should fall out of the sky. Its gossamer lightweight makes it the ideal choice when the only thing making the wave is your hands. The two for one design can scale up well in size, but we'll start small. Bigger gliders can be more challenging, or even impossible, if high humidity in the air makes the paper limp. Just because these gliders are made of paper doesn't mean you can slop them together. You have to pay attention to lots of pesky, seemingly meaningless details, and the first glider will seem like it's taking forever to make. Then it might take as long again to adjust. After I'd been at it for a while, I thought I'd never get one working. I quit several times, but I kept coming back, finally got it, and I know you will too, even if you end up making several gliders before you get it right. When you work through trouble, success is sweet. People who want to surf things on waves of air are also rightly inclined to defy experts, test conventional wisdom, and experiment for themselves, but get into the air first. The time to do things your way is after you get one flying. First time through, do it my way. Follow the instructions exactly. Don't assume anything. Don't do anything that's not in the instructions. Trust me on this.